Good morning and welcome to week number four. As you can see, I'm back from Costa Rica, arrived back safe and sound um, this past Monday, and um, I am ready to go to finish off the um, next couple of weeks with uh, your annotated bibliographies along with your final papers, the researched argument essay. Before we get into talking about the course activities for um, this week, I want to touch on a couple of things that I have been noticing with your papers and also um, a couple of the sections in the book that I want you to pay close attention to as you um, progress throughout the semester along with a couple of housekeeping um, issues. Um, so the first thing, emails. A couple of you have sent me emails over the course of the past couple of days. Um, the past couple of weeks, my internet access has been a little bit shoddy, but now I'm back in the States. Um, so if I have not responded to your email, don't fret. I'm going to be working on that for the next couple of days, so I'm a little behind. So um, please be patient with me. I will be getting to your email as soon as possible. Um, the second thing is um, the grades. So currently I am in the process of updating grades. That is um, that that goes along with uh, grading your first papers. So um, in your research narrative essay, if you look in the um, Dropbox, you'll see um, I will upload or I have upload uploaded, I should say, um, your research narrative essay along with my comments. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of your paper, you'll see your grade and that grade should coincide with the grade in the grade book. Um, currently, I'm, I'm almost about finished with everyone's um, paper, but I still have a few more to go. And so if you don't have your grade yet for your researched argument essay, um, it should be up within the next couple of days. Um, thirdly, the thing that I've been noticing with your papers, um, so for the most part, everyone's been doing a good job. I want you to keep up the good work. Um, we have about um, three and a half more weeks to go. Um, and so one of the things that I want you all to pay close attention to um, as you move forward with your papers is the yellow section of your book. So a lot of you have issues um, with sentence structure or coherence or providing a sense of unity in your paper. Um, along that same line, you also want to pay close attention to providing clear transitions between your paragraphs. All the, um, the, the, the discussion in your, the yellow section of your book, which is the handbook, discusses all of these issues from coordination, subordination, to using the appropriate words, to, um, to providing a sense of coherence in your essay, to providing a sense of parallel structures in your sentences. So when you get your papers back and you see that I've written on your papers, you need a um, clearer sense of coherence here, or you wanna work on your sentence structure, or perhaps you have um, confusing word choice, you wanna go back and correlate those terms to the yellow section of your book. And along with the yellow section of your book, they also provide examples of how you can um, provide a stronger sense of coherence or perhaps use transitions um, a little bit more effectively in your paper. Another thing that I want you all to pay close attention to is using signal words. So for instance, in your paper number one, I might have put, um, I might have written in your paper that you need to put um, a signal word here or use an active verb in introducing your source material. Or perhaps I told you to contextualize that source material. So what I mean by that, and they discuss this in, your, in the blue section of your book when they talk about documenting and using source Sources is when you um, introduce a source for the first time in your paper, you want to give the reader a strong context with, with the use of signal verbs. So for instance, rather than just put that information in your paper and then tack on a work cited or a citation at the end, you want to um, introduce that material with Jane Doe states or Jane Doe writes or John Doe argues. Um, so in the blue section of your book, those use of those terms like argues or states or acknowledges or asserts, those are examples of signal verbs that are connected to what are called attributive tags. Attributive tags introduce the reader to the source and the author of that source. And those signal verbs let the reader know what the author is doing. So is the author arguing? Is the author stating? Is the author writing? Is the author quoting from another author? So you wanna make sure that you provide clear attributive tags with effective signal verbs 
as you move forward with writing your papers. So when you write your annotated bibliography, you're going to plan all of that information out in the annotated bibliography format. And when you write your final third paper, the researched argument essay, you will be um, you will need to use those transitional words and those signal verbs. So again, when I put things like you need to contextualize this information or that you need an attributive tag or that you need a signal verb or a more effective signal verb other than says or talks about, that's what I'm talking about. And they review this section in the blue section of your, of your textbook. Another thing that I want you all to pay close attention to as you move forward in writing your papers is this use of the present and past tense. One of the things that I always do when I'm writing, and a lot of times when, I'm, when, you're, when one is writing about fiction, they use the present tense. It does. There's no real hard, fast rule about whether you should use the present or past tense in your writing. The only rule that usually sticks is if, it's, if, it, if, if you're writing about fiction, you always want to use the present tense. But whatever tense you choose, make sure that you stick to it. So a few of you in your paper number one, I might have put in the margin that there's a tense shift going on here, which means that you've switched from past tense to present tense or from present to past tense all within one paragraph or all within one sentence. So as you're writing um, in your papers, you wanna make sure that you stick to the consi a consistent tense throughout the paper. Another thing that I want you all to pay close attention to is your pronoun usage. Um, now, in your first paper, because it's written in the first person, for instance, I found this, I saw this, I explored this, it's okay to use I. It's okay to use I in that first person, or I'm sorry, in that um, in that narrative because it's, it's a first person account. Um, you can also use third person in that narrative. But as you move on to your third paper, your, um, your final paper, you want to make sure that you stick to the third person. So for instance, if you have something to say about American society, you're not going to use we or our society because that assumes that you are speaking to a limited American audience. You want to assume that you're speaking to a larger audience, um, a universal audience, if you will. So rather than saying we as Americans, you might just say Americans in general. Rather than saying that we need to do something, you should just say society or using um, pronouns such as he, she, um, they, it. So you want to avoid second person pronoun references such as you. So you want to avoid those areas where you're saying you should do this. This is your um, this is your problem um, because that assumes that you're talking directly to me and it limits your audience. So for those of you in your papers, when I crossed out you or your, that means that you're using the second person pronoun reference. And that makes it um, confusing for the reader because it suggests that you're giving a command to the reader. Another thing that you want to avoid is first person sing first person plural references such as we and our. First person singular I is okay in the first paper, but um First person plural such as we and our is not okay when you're talking about or when you're using academic research writing. So first person plural pronouns such as we and our suggest that you're just talking about you and I, whereas the second person you suggests that you're giving me, your reader, a command. Even though I am your reader and even though I am evaluating your paper, you want to write your paper in the third person perspective as if you're writing to a universal audience. So those are the major things that I encountered in your um, paper number one that I want you all to be aware of as you move for as you move um, along in your paper number two and your paper number three. So for this week, you're going to focus on your annotated bibliography. Um, for the discussion board, and let me just pull up the course activities to make sure that we're all on the same page, 
you're going to be reading a section in your book discussing how to analyze text. Now, this is a very important section because I, I expect you to use this information about analyzing text to help you analyze your source material. Now, it's one thing to grab a whole bunch of sources around an idea and then regurgitate those sources in a paper. But the reason why I'm having you do this annotated bibliography is that I'm forcing you to analyze, to use the information in your textbook on how to analyze text break down that information and discuss and plan and organize that information out in your annotated bibliography. Another thing that you're going to be reading this week is acknowledging sources and avoiding plagiarism in your textbook. So in that section, they're going to discuss, the writers discuss how to um, effectively integrate source material um, and, and, and um, provide a sense of, or provide a distinction, I should say, between your ideas and the author's ideas. So it, you, it doesn't become murky and it doesn't become questionable for the reader where your ideas lie versus the um, ideas of the of the actual author. And again, using things like clear attribution and clear signal verbs help make a distinction between your ideas and the author's ideas for those of you who have trouble with distinguishing between the two. And you're also going to be reading the section, another section in your handbook, the yellow section on grammar and mechanics and punctuation and language use. So make sure that you go over that in detail because when I am looking at your papers and I use that jargon such as um, you need more coherence here or this is not a unified paragraph, I'm referring to those sections or I'm referring to the yellow section in your handbook. So if you have specific questions about how you can improve on those issues in your paper, such as grammar and punctuation and mechanics, you want to refer to the yellow section of your book and then you can ask specific questions for me if the exercise sizes don't give you um, the answers that you that you're looking for. As a reminder, you want to make sure that you prepare for test number two, which will take place on June 2nd, and um, you'll have until June 3rd to submit that test. Um, and then you'll also have one mandatory discussion board this week in which you will talk about your research progress. Now, in this discussion board, you'll talk about your research progress, you'll talk about one of the sources that you found, and you'll also discuss whether it is a popular or an academic source and they give a distinction between popular and academic sources in your textbook along with um, the links that I provided for you from week number three. So this week you will be working on your annotated bibliography. You have to finish, you have to make sure you do test two and um, you will post to the, to the discussion board and this is all to build you up for the final paper. I will be online. I will be checking the discussion boards. Like I said before, I'm going to be updating the grades. I'm going to be updating emails. So for those of you that have written me emails, don't fret. I will be sure to reply to your email within the next couple of days. In the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, send me an email or post it to the discussion board. And um, happy reading and writing. And I will see you in cyberspace.